Richard Russo is one of Maine's best writers. His book Empire Falls won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction nearly 20 years ago, and since then Russo has written more novels as well as short stories and a memoir. His new novel is Chances Are, the story of three men who've been friends since they attended college together in the 1960s. At the time, a young man's fate in America could be decided by whether he received a high or low number in the military draft. Russo got a high number and did not have to serve, but as he told Rob in this book and in his own life, the Vietnam War has never gone away. The book is dedicated to the names on the wall. Yes. On the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. Yes. So I think I probably know the answer to this question, but it sure sounds as though you yourself are more than a little bit haunted by the Absolutely. Vietnam War. Absolutely. Absolutely. This, is, this, this book... Uh, this book is a genuine haunting. Russo was struck when he saw Bruce Springsteen's show on Broadway. He and Springsteen are the same age. Both were hostages to fate when it came to whether they'd get a low draft number or a high one, whether they'd be drafted and sent to Vietnam or allowed to stay home and avoid the war altogether. So he and his friends and some of them got drafted and some didn't. And he, and he says in that, in, in that show, I don't know who died in my place, but somebody did. And... I think that those of us who uh, dumb luck smiled on that day, myself included, um, you, you can still oppose the war that was fought, but you have to honor the people who, who, who fought it. So yeah, this book is dedicated to those names. You've been doing this for a long time now. When you've got that wealth of experience behind you in writing, does it make it significantly easier? No. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> you mean you haven't learned if, a thing if, along the way? If only. <laughs> <laughs> no, if only, if only. No, each, each, each book, that's the thing about novel writing is, I, is, is that I think you never really learn how to do it. Um, the thing that's easier is that each time you do it, it's, it's, um, you build your confidence. And, and so that when you get to page 270 um, in a book and you don't know what comes next and you think you've made a mistake and the, the little voice is whispering, in, all right, this time you've done it to yourself, haven't you? This one you can't write. Um, what happens is that um, you remind yourself, you think, I always feel that way at this point in the book. This, that, that happens with every single novel. You always feel this way. And in the past, it did work out. And so you, that's what's easier is that you, well, you know, there were 15 other books I felt exactly like this. But the thing that's not easier is that what worked in the last book won't work in this one. <laughs> so, so whatever you've learned, yeah, you've learned it, but it's of no use to you. After you've written as many books as you have, does it get harder to come up with the big idea that you need that will propel a 300-page novel? Uh, number number one, I try my very best not to think ever in terms of a phrase like "big idea." <laughs> I, I, what I like what I like more is is to come up with um, uh, even a tiny idea that might interest me from now through next Tuesday, and then just let it because my my imagination works in such a way that that if I can get if I can get really interested in something on Tuesday of this week. My imagine is going to take care of the rest of it. It's going to grow. It's going to grow. Is it to a large degree that you love your characters and your characters sort of lead the way? That they pretty much propel the book. Pretty much. Um, I I don't like I don't like bores in fiction any more than I like bores in real life. So I tend to I tend to write about stories that I that that uh, people whose whose company I enjoy. One of the reviews from a, a major publication said, "Quote." Nobody understands men better than Rousseau. That's a really complimentary line for a writer. Yeah, I wish it were true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, I, you know, I, I guess what I would say is that I understand, I understand my guys. There's a certain kind of, of man that, that um, I think I have a pretty decent read on. Russo says whenever one of his books is published now, it takes him back to his first novel, Mohawk, which was rejected by publishers 23 times. I don't know if I've told you this story or not before, Rob, but with the first book, there was a point if the, if the devil had appeared to me and said, we'll give you this one book, this Mohawk book, we'll let you publish that one, but after that, you're done. 
I would have taken that. I would have taken that deal right then because I was at a point where I didn't think it was going to happen. It's all gravy. It's all gravy after that first one because of the deal that I, I, I probably would have taken at the time. Have you had any books rejected since then? Um, no, but I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> now there's an optimist. <laughs> still very humble through this <laughs> that whole writer thing about oh my gosh you know the angst around it oh yeah unbelievable yeah <laughs> again the name of Richard Russo's new novel is chances are he'll be talking about it on Monday August 12th at an event at left bank books in Belfast